Okay, so once again, welcome. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, uh, additive transfer and uh, models of vertical structure of accretion disks. Uh, my collaborators, or long term collaborators on this project, are listed here Shane Davis, Omer Blaise, Eric Ago, when he was still interested in quasars and not in extrasolar planets, Julian Krolik, and also Michal Bursa here. So let me first stress important, very important thing here, namely that uh, radiation plays a dual role in this business, not only here in the atmosphere and similar objects, namely that it is diagnostic tool. That's what we see and what we need to, to observe in order to deduce anything about properties. But also, importantly, it's also energy balance or moment to balance agent means that radiation not only probes the structure, but in fact determines the structure. Uh, that's what makes <coughs> problem relatively complicated and complex, and what also means that, means that radiation has to be treated relatively exactly in order to extract as much information as possible. Uh, speaking of radiation, I make some small Advertisement, we finally finished the book after a long time, um, which was originally meant as a third edition of uh, Dimitri Mill's famous textbook, Stellar Atmospheres, but over the years it became independent book and um, entitled Theory of Stellar Atmospheres. I also must say, must, must say that very, very sadly, uh, Dimitri passed away just a week ago and um, Fortunately, we just submitted it days before that, so at least if he couldn't see the final book, at least he saw the submitted manuscript. Of, and sadly, it, well, it is his last contribution, last of very many contributions to the science. So, so why, why is aggregation difficult? Well, so if you look at that, so accretion disk obviously should be modeled by some sort of hydro or radiation hydro. In the standard hydro, not magneto hydro, but just hydro, one, well, one has essentially seven quantities per cell, listed here, density, velocity, temperature, pressure, internal energy. And that's basically it. So uh, one has to solve those seven equations, and these equations are essentially local, because mean free pass of particles is very sh short. So these are local differential equations. Of course, there are many cells, so it makes the problem complicated. But nevertheless, why? Well, if radiation is taken into account, so at first sight, one needs to consider, again, only few new quantities, one component of energy of radiation, three components of radiation uh, force or momentum, and uh, six components of radiation pressure tensor. But these quantities are Integrals are integrals over angle, over direction, and over frequency. And without making approximations, one needs to know, in order to compute those hydrodynamically interesting quantities, one actually needs to know all those specific intensity radiation as a function of frequency and direction. Again, in principle, of course, in reality, one can one can never do that, but uh, exact models should uh, include that. So instead of needing few more quantities to make a difference between hydro and radiation hydro, one in fact would need as many specific intensity as is necessary. It can be a lot. It can be at least 10 to the 3. It can be also 10 to the 7. Really, one has to uh, resolve the whole spectrum. And that's not the whole story. The problem is that radiation is very highly non-local because mean free pass of photons is much, much larger than mean free pass of particles. So radiation transports information from one part of the medium to a very distant part of the medium. And therefore, many methods which are used for hydro, like for instance, domain decomposition, which leads to very easy parallelization, here doesn't work because radiation connects the vast regions of uh, medium. So 
that is a complication. Another complication of, on top of everything, now I, I won't <coughs> show many equations, just this one, is addition transport equation, which looks very uh, innocuous, yeah? That's just simple equation, streaming term over the inside, and one simple term which is discuss interaction with generation matter on the right hand side. Uh, what is the problem here is that obviously these are this emission coefficient, this absorption coefficient, they do depend also on radiation field because for instance number of photons emitted, photon may be emitted after previous absorption. And therefore, this emission should also take into account, it's clear that it should and, and does, in many cases, depend on the radiation field. So actually, it's not simple linear differential equation for specific intensity. It's actually complicated, in principle, again, integral differential equation for specific intensities. And because of the non-local nature, that's also non-local and linear. So it, it makes it relatively complicated to, to calculate anything. So, nevertheless, of course, large progress has been made during the last several decades, which I partly and briefly described here. So, let's get finally to accretion disk. You all know that, just to set up the stage. So, also one, in principle, can strive to describe any sort of accretion disk by the same numerical methodology and as a, as a final product by the same quantity code. And uh, so accretion can happen on many different types of object, it, objects. It can be even non-degenerate object, in which case one deals with system like beta lyrae or so-called W serp serpentis stars. If it is, if accreting object is white dwarf, is sort of most famous or most, most, most popular perhaps uh, class, uh, series cataclysmic variables, if it is star mass black hole, as we talked about, talk about in the whole week, it's um, low mass X ray binary, and it can also be supermassive black hole, in, in which case one, one speaks about AGM. Now, tra traditionally, so now one can model accretion disks as such, but in various degrees of sophistication. So here is a very brief outline. So, first division, first criterion is whether I can really separate radial and vertical structure. In most cases, in the large majority of cases, actually, one separates those. I show in a moment how it is being done. Uh, it was for many years, it was really paradigm to really provide radial structure by some independent calculations and then to solve for vertical structure independently of, of the radial structure. Underlying assumption is that in order to be valid, this should be geometrically thin, which in many cases is. And even if it is done, so of course now there are many different possibilities what to do. Radiation doesn't have to be taken into account at all in calculating structure, in which case, for instance, one gets uh, Shakura Sunyaya in classical or Novikov turn <coughs> disk. Uh, point is that in all those studies, total flux is expressed as a very simple function of mass of the object, mass accretion rate, and some geometric factor which may include uh, general relativistic corrections. It is in the notation of Krolik's book. So, and then one gets total flux, which in analogy with star atmospheres is expressed as through effective temperature sigma to the to the force, and local spectrum is then assumed to be black body corresponding to this temperature, which is function of radius. Well, and then it, it makes life very easy because, of course, one only thing one has to do in case of classical disks, just integrate in, in case of uh, black hole disk, one has to still do ray tracing or transfer function to get final spectrum. But all the complication of interaction between radiation and matter within the disk is avoided. Uh, another, and uh, as you, another possibility now is to treat radiation somehow 
to compute the structure, particular structure still for given radial structure, to do better than just assuming collection of black bodies. I, it has been done by several possibilities. I don't mention them. There are some, uh, a lot of studies that use uh, simplified treatment of radiation field, like for instance, a diffusion approximation, which is good, but diffusion approximation applies only deep, very far from the boundary and not at the, at the surface, so it is questionable. One can then, in, I would say, 19, uh, late 1980s, 1990s, the first really so-called so self-consistent modules uh, came along uh, in LDE, as means local thermal equilibrium. It's, for instance, models by Jörg Made, Agata Rozenska, Agata, we'll talk about that, I guess, a little bit later today. Also, for departures from local thermal equilibrium, so-called non-LTE, I, I started, we have started work with that, with program TLST, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Also later, colleagues in Tübingen, who also had a program for star atmospheres, also adapted that and, and de um, developed a disk called, called ACDC. Well, but now, very recent uh, important development is to go beyond the separation of radial and, and vertical structure, which is also needed in the if the disk is not really geometrically thin, like for example, for slim disk, and um, Alex Sadovsky and others are very active in this field. Although I must say, that despite of this big progress, still really fully self-consistent models, which go beyond uh, this simple separation, are not yet constructed, but I believe that they may be very soon. Okay, so let, let me get back to this classical <coughs> methodology of modeling accretion disks. So picture as follows. Here is the central object, whatever it is. And this being thin is divided to a set of concentric rings. And each ring is assumed to be independent. And um, it's, um, if the disk height is much smaller than radial extent, so one can actually assume that given ring is always horizontally homogeneous within, within itself. Next ring, of course, is, is, is also horizontally homogeneous, but with different parameters. So it means that then computing the structure is divided into computing set of those individual plane parallel radiating slabs. So generally, at least 2D problem is being reduced to a set of 1D problems, which may sometimes is being called as one and a half D problem. And, um, and so it, each, each ring looks very much like, somewhat like stellar atmosphere. So the analogy, let me point out this analogy here. So equations which do describe the structure are actually very similar, but there are of course important differences. Uh, in uh, star atmosphere, there is radiative equilibrium or radiative plus convective, which means that total absorption for, for is equal to total emission. No net energy is being generated in star atmosphere. That's the definition of a star atmosphere. While, of course, in the accretion disk, uh, there is a dissipation of energy which provides the source of radiation of the thing. Here, the source of radiation, of course, is radiation from the interior. Here, sources uh, within this itself. So, of course, no relative equilibrium. But if one has some simple prescription, how energy is being generated, and we do have this alpha prescription, which is not perfect, but useful for constructing some models, so one can set up equation, which also say total emission minus total absorption is not zero, but some sort of viscous dissipation term, which, if expressible by in, in terms of sit state parameters leads to similar equation. Uh, gravity acceleration in the atmosphere is assumed to be constant. It is, of course, not constant within the disk. It, it varies it is zero at the midplane and increases at first approximation, uh, first approximation linearly with uh, height. Total optical thickness in atmosphere, of course, is infinite, while in the disk is not. It can be many things. It can be, this can be either be very optically thick, in which case, with more stratmosphere, it can also be thin, 
in which case is very different. And of course, final spectrum is easy for sterile atmosphere, but it's difficult, as I already mentioned, in the case of this, because there is, on top of everything, this additional integration uh, over whole disk, including Doppler effects, and in case of GR, all those GR effects like Doppler boosting and uh, relativistic blue and red shifts. So our, our methodology will use computer program, which is called TLST. Now, uh, I, I am the, the original uh, pronunciation of the term, as many of you know, or I check if it's Clusty, but I'm used to in the US, it would be hard to, to pronounce, so I, I got used to the TLST which is programmed originally uh, for stellar atmospheres, but also adapted from the disk, and now a simple switch tells the program whether one deals with atmosphere or a disk, and here are basic assumptions, plan parallel geometry, hydrostatic equilibrium, in case of disk also it means that there is very little hydrostatic equilibrium, radiated pass quantitative equilibrium, statistical or kinetic equilibrium, not necessarily LTE, local thermal equilibrium, which is advantage because in many disks, Departures from local equilibrium are important. As I say, compute either atmosphere or atmospheres or disk. Also include external radiation, which is crucial, for instance, for extrasolar planet. And also in interesting or important in some cases, vacation disks, as, as we well know. Numerically, there is a method called hybrid computerization accelerated lambda iteration method which I'm not going to talk about. It's sort of clever. It's a combination between two methods with, for, from which is ALI, accelerated lambda iteration, has been very powerful method developed for radiation transport and being used uh, for many studies afterwards. And uh, recently also, because I worked in, well, since I came to Tucson, I also worked with the group on models of extrasolar planets and uh, brown dwarfs. First years were very nice because no spectra were observed, so one was completely free and, and could, could compute whatever, but then of course they start to be observed. So because of that, total range of applicability of the TLST fault is actually pretty high. It's from 50k or, or so up to say 10 to the 9. The upper limit is that Unfortunately, which I'm going to talk about, I don't yet have fully relativistic perception for Compton scattering, which is needed above those temperatures. And here is a list of assumptions for accretion this, just to summarize in, uh, radio structure now is given by Novikov Torn or some, some variant of Stilzer at, at all, so with some, some slight changes. As I said, this is composed of eccentric rigs, vertical hydrostatic equilibrium. Uh, now, I, uh, we, uh, we use alpha prescription, means that vertical average viscosity is proportional to vertical average pressure. And local viscosity, proportional density. But it can be, it can be anything. It can be modified just by default, but it can be any viscosity profile. So we played with some increased dissipation towards the disk surface, in which case one very naturally gets this colony and everything, but I never published it because I'm not sure whether it is nothing more than numerical exercise because it, you can put anything and as an input and output also can be anything very high increase of the temperature. So it's easily possible, but physics behind it is unclear. Of course, one it's, it would be possible in the near future to combine hydro results, which do input MRI, MRI to translate them into alpha prescription to varying alpha or varying dissipation, and then to compute those models. Uh, but it has not yet been done. Uh, and uh, so far, I think, the, as I mentioned, for uh, for our purposes, for partition this around solar mass black holes, uh, most restrictive assumption so far is. Uh, Assumption, uh, approximation of uh, companions approximation for Compton scattering, which I, I am about to improve for many years now, but I was busy with other things, so I didn't do that yet. But I hope I will before I die. Uh, the radiation transport is treated with non LTE, and if required, radi uh, external radiation can be taken, equipment taken into account. So let me now show a few results 
I go from high mass of black hole to low mass, so which means that I naturally start with AGN disks. And uh, that was a study, and it just interesting. I, I, I put it to show differences between these are spectra produced for individual annuli going from innermost, that's for curved black holes, so you go almost to one gravitational radii, so almost one to some 50 or 70 gravitational radii here, and dotted lines are black bodies. So it, it's, it clearly shows that approximation that you assign black body radiation to a given annuli is, of course, very dangerous and misrepresents the total spectrum. Now the features, because these are only simple hydrogen helium models, so you, the only features one sees are helium to Lyman continuum, and this hydrogen Lyman continuum, and here you see Balmet continuum, particularly for those rings which are far from the hole and therefore are relatively cold. Okay, here, and we, we have concerted with, uh, with those people mentioned that are on place, Arti Fagol, Julian, we constructed a little bit bigger bit of, uh, of models, varying mass, mass accretion rate, and for two values of alpha parameter, 0.1 and 0.01, which seem to bracket usually used values. And here are some, 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 uh, some results. Here is sensitivity of viewing angle. So viewing edge on, of course, once one shifts radiation to hard, Heart range, heart photon range. Here is its, its frequency is 10 to the 15, 16, 17. And uh, this viewed face on, of course, most fluxes in, in UV optical for this particular disk, which is M9 is one, M9 is mass in units of 10 to the 9 solar masses, and M dot is one solar mass a year. So the typical values for, for, for an AGM. And these, these are for several such models with decreasing total luminosity or mass accretion rate. Uh, here it shows uh, differences between LTE and non-LTE. So taking all those effects into account, those effects are less dramatic than effects for individual annuli, but nevertheless clearly visible. Here is, a, here is a comparison of models of dependence on the black hole spin. Uh, only for two cases for short shield and for care, obvious feature is that care, care black hole has much larger contribution of hard, uh, high energy photons because this extends closer, or ISCO goes much closer to the black hole. And that's the feature which already Jeff talked about, about how is the <clears throat> spin being measured because of the sensitivity of global model to, um, to the position of ISCO. Here is, um, here is effect of viscosity parameter, which is sort of good news or bad news. It depends how you, take, how you view it. Good news is that it's not very sensitive to alpha, which is good. Bad news is that if, had it be, so one can determine perhaps or constrain alpha from observations. So, but my, I personally am glad that that is not so sensitive to alpha. Also here is just very briefly effects of Compton scattering. Original, original models were without Compton. It's not additional Comptonization, it's Compton scattering already within the disk itself without any additional corona. It's just Electron scattering is being treated as inelastic. So it is effect on temperature structure. It produces, it is again not artificial corona, it is just temperature rise because of compound scattering already in this in so-called disk atmosphere. And here is also effect on radiation, produce radiation fields. So you see there are also important differences, particularly only for hot annuli. For cool annuli, there are no differences because energies of photons are not so high. We also compared with uh, composite or standard quasar spectrum. So there are some of our models in DASH and there is this comp composite quasar spectrum, which, as you see, corresponds reasonably well 
But in Balamec continuum, which is a little bit worrisome, but it's because treatment of those cold annuli, which are important here, were not perfect, convection was not there, and, and so on. Fortunately, it doesn't play a very much role in solar mass black hole uh, accretion disks. And um, final one on AGNs is we did study of, um, or uh, try to fit our models to first first discovered quasar 3C273, which is not really appropriate because it turns out that we don't, we cannot go to very high luminosities because in that case this is not thin anymore and our criterion though was that height of the disk shouldn't be larger than 10% of radio coordinate and so it translates to Eddington luminosity, say 0.3 Eddington luminosity while 3C273 are already somewhat bigger, 0.5 Eddington if I'm not mistaken. So, so but nevertheless those models, these are observed point I mean, in continuum itself, of course, spectrum, spectrum is full of broad lines, but continuum windows are here. There are some our models which sort of uh, reproduce nicely. Now, with additional compensation is usually being done, X-ray or UV and X-ray are reproduced very nicely, but with this additional compensation. Now, let me also mention uh, one thing. One can compute final model of accretion disk in two different ways. Either as we did it there, namely to do all NUI, do the spectra of NUI, and to integrate them together. If you change parameters, you have to do that again. So better treatment is so uh, well, later I developed this package AGN spec, which actually we constructed grid of uh, generic NUI, and then any parameter user submits any combination of parameters, mass, accretion rate, spin, and alpha and also this inclination, anything, and then the package selects some NUI, interpolates from the generic NUI to NUI which happen to be in the disk and provides this uh, ray tracing by called Kertrans, which was written by Eric Agrola, as his PhD, basically. So, so it, this package actually is available, it's not very well visible on my website because I'm going to Again, a little bit updated and having those cold models with convection, but it is available and people sometimes are using that. So here are just briefly some that are showing uh, later we did study for Seifert's, meaning, meaning going with mass down. These, these models were for black hole 10 to the 6 solar masses. Now here the effects, the disk of are hotter, temperature 10 to the 6, 10 to the 7. Uh, and then, because they are thin, also effects of alpha are much larger now. Those stretches are different. Here is how what is radiation again emergent radiation field, uh, which is produced by that, and also for different alphas. Again, one sees some differences. Uh, still continuation. Here is uh, here is sen first sensitivity on on. Mass, it is with the same same luminosity, 0.3 Eddington, and mass 10 to the 6, 10 to the 7, 10 to the 8. As you see, uh, one goes to hard radiation for lower mass. I just briefly show up, one can construct uh, ionization fractions, which is sort of fun because for those, for, for three individual annulites, that's for oxygen. This is for iron, so oxygen, of course, fully stripped. Iron also for for the for the disk which is only just below million degrees, but already. And then if you go to different annuli, now you get completely different ions of iron, which makes also computation relatively complicated because one has to a lot of atomic data because it, it is not a priori known which iron will contribute. Okay, I only flash here. We did also study. Uh, with Yavei Hui and Julian on um, intermediate mass black holes. This was 10 to the two solar masses. And finally, uh, we did for the topic which is most uh, closest to our, our topic in the conference, solar mass black holes. And we did uh, Shane Davis, more or less as his PhD thesis, uh, run many models. There are some selections. 
of, of models here. And um, in this paper, we actually published we published uh, this package ph spec, which is implemented within um, the X star project. And it is like this AGN spec I talked about. We constructed a bit of generic NUI. And now user can use any combination of parameters. I also am doing the same thing just for completeness for, for CV. So it is being called this spec. Now, uh, there was some issue about accuracy of um, control scattering, particularly two years ago in a meeting in Warsaw. So after that, we, we, did, we looked into that, and uh, Shane Davis in Big Team wrote independent Monte Carlo code, so we compared our results with TLST and his Monte Carlo code, and it looked very, very nice. That was the for annulus, which is temperature 6.2, uh, 10 to the 6.2, and uh, column mass 10 to the 5 and some gravity parameter, it doesn't matter, but about million degree um, annulus. And uh, last but one is also one can study external radiation, uh, which we are currently working on with Michal Brusa. These are some results for what we did with the algebra machine. Again, it just shows it's possible to do because the radiation, it was irradiated by some empirical black body spectrum of high temperature. So this temperature structure is unirradiated disk and there is irradiation with some dilution factors and here is how it translates to the predicted spectrum. Okay, because I'm sort of behind, so uh, I finish by showing what I think are challenges from the future. So still within 1D, one needs to include metal lines, so-called metal line blanketing. Also, at least I have to do consistent treatment of convection to be able to, to do cool NUI. Then one has to do 2D radiation transfer for snapshots for some hydro simulations. Then self-consistent 2D models, means 2D structure with 2D radiation. Then 3D radiation on snapshot of 3D hydro on the box, then 3D radiation hydro on the box, meaning resolving the MRI scale. And finally, holy grail is to do whole thing in 3D. So. Thank you, let's thank Ivan.